TNT Touch Practitioner for Animals and People. And this is Tristan, he's a Corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Had a little trouble getting online this morning, so we're a little later than we should be. But I'm excited because yesterday was Friday the 13th, that's behind us. <laughs> and today is National Live Creative Day. The English teacher in me just bristles because creative should be an adverb with an L-Y, live creatively. But, you know, changing things like, you know, um, he gave me a gift to he gifted me <laughs> means that live creative might be the new adverb. I, it's an English teacher just bristles. But what that day means, oh, hi, Neely, I'm glad you're back. Um, so what that day really means is to find your inner creativity and live creatively. And I feel like I have lived my whole life that way. When I meet people, like I used to go to a lot of concerts um, and people that I would see regularly all thought I was an artist just because of how I am. And in fact, my life is art for me. Um, I have purple hair and I suggest doing some things like this in your life. If you've been a person who hasn't let your creativity out. Today's a good day to do that in some little way because it is so um, self-affirming um, and so wonderful to be able to express yourself. And I think that, you know, people who are fortunate to be artists and make a living, um, whether you're a musician or um, visual art, graphic art, you know, web design, um, designing, clothing design, house design, I mean, architects, people who get to do their creative work for their life are so fortunate. And I have had the good luck of having close friendships with many kinds of artists throughout my life. So some things that you might do to celebrate creativity today that may or may not be related to your pet. For instance, I love to go to Claire's in the mall. <laughs> It's a store that specializes in selling glittery and pink things to those tween age girls, but it's a great place to shop for a big purple flower for your dog to wear, or maybe for you to wear, we do share. Um, and there's other things in there that might inspire you, but there are many things in that store that you can put on your dogs <laughs> and uh, have a special day for them if they're going anywhere um, new or if you've got a guest coming over to dress your dog up a little bit. Now, this feather, feathery flower is not one Tristan will wear very long. He'll be rolling and rolling on the rug trying to remove it. But for a little while, it's fun. You know, and as I said, I live with purple hair for a lot of more deep spiritual reasons, but um, you know, if that were just the case, I might have henna to red hair instead of purple because I'm willing, and it's bluish actually, I'm willing to take that risk because of um, the expressive nature of having your hair a color. Um, but plenty of people can buy things like this and put them in your hair. Um, guys can wear things in their hair. My sister's son loves to wear like a little pink hair bow, even though at different times he's had a buzz cut or dreadlocks. But, you know, just to do the unexpected because he's always pushing people's boundaries and his own. And, you know, in many ways he's conservative, but in many ways he's not. He comes from our family after all. So he is a free thinking guy. <laughs> um, and you might like, like, look at one of your bathrooms. This is a small thing to do and paint it an unexpected color. Maybe your house is pretty boring and gray and beige, but to do like peacock or tangerine on a couple of walls in the bathroom is an easy thing to do and it can really brighten your life. Um, this house is pretty beige when I bought it, but now it's like eight colors of blue in different rooms. And then I have this little dark nook um, in the kitchen and I just bought like this bright yellow color and put it in there. And honestly, when you look at it, it doesn't look any different than the beigeness around it. But because it's so bright, it's not a dark nook anymore because of that yellow color. A lot of people like to paint the door of their house an unexpected color. Um, and that's something easy to do and easy to change. Um, some of the other things you might do, uh, I love to make costumes for myself and my dog. Um, but even just making uh, an accessory, like a, a lot of guys I know like to wear a fun bow tie or even just wearing a bow tie is a way to express yourself in a creative way. Um, you can also do art if you haven't done art. I know with my pal Bernie Siegel always asks people to draw a picture of themselves 
and a picture of themselves with their disease and a picture of themselves with their disease and the cure. And he learns a lot about your deep psychological nature and the outcome of your potential disease. And this actually was started by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who we all know, who wrote about um, dying in hospice care and grief. And, um, you know, Bernie's really brilliant. But to be able to just draw a picture of yourself with crayons, he highly advocates using crayons. Um, it's really an interesting thing to see what you do. Do you have ears? Do you have teeth? Do you have a smile? Do you have people around you? Are your feet unusually big? I mean, he likes to look at all the proportions. So get some crayons, draw a picture of yourself, draw a picture of your pet. Um, he has had many people, when he asked them to draw a picture of themselves, have their kid do it, which tells a lot about their priorities in life when they can't even draw a picture of themselves. But I suggest making art. Um, one of the things I like to do is get watercolor paint, put it on my dog's feet, and this is great to do on a deck or the lawn and then have them walk back and forth across a piece of paper um, putting colored paw prints on it so you can do art with your dog that way um, some of the other things i have in my animal connection cards which are up there that you can do with your dog is there's great books of poetry about dogs one of my favorites um, is one by mary oliver and uh I love to read poetry to my dog about other dogs and that's a fun thing to do on a uh, cold day when you're just snuggled up with your pet. Um, some of the other things you can do that are simple and fun are buying fun socks. You know, I have so many pairs of corgi socks <laughs> and to some people that's the wildest sock in their wardrobe, some of my corgi pals. But a lot of people I know, there's a guy I work with, pretty conservative dude, pretty much gray and beige, but he has like red polka dotted socks and blue striped socks and Boy, there's nobody that walks by him and doesn't smile when they see his socks. So that may be your self-expression. I mean, he lives in a pretty conservative environment there at that job and his socks are his creativity. So think about things like that you can do to bring some creativity in your life. For some people, it might be baking um, and maybe making some creative meal for you and your pet. Um, one of the people that came to the Corgi picnic went to quite a bit of trouble to make cookies that were for corgis and people. And they were sort of a sweet potato pumpkin based thing. So they didn't have sugar in them, but they still were sweet enough to taste like a cookie or a biscuit to a human, but still delicious for a dog. Um, so that's always fun. Um, and you know, you can make an elaborate cake or something like that um, to give a friend. I think it's really fun when you can do something unexpected like that. Like I, my neighbor is having such a hard time with her house right now. <clears throat> and uh, just one financial thing after the next keeps coming up for her. So for me, it would be really fun for me to like make her a little cake or even buy her one and just bring it to her and have like a fun five minutes in the day. Um, and our dogs are buddies, so I could even just bring over some fun dog biscuits and have a fun little five minute dog party just to give her a break because her life is super stressful right now. So there's things you can do like that in your life that um, allow for your creativity, but also help other people, which of course is the best thing and involve your pets, right, Tristan? He says, oh, Coco visit, I like that. <laughs> this little fella needs a bath so badly. I think today he's going to become a coconut corgi again, right? <laughs> so find some creativity in your life today. Make up a song. Um, one of my friends loves, and she's not a good singer. She's only a little better than me, and I think I am one of the worst singers in the United States by far. She loves to sing songs to her dog. She listens to pop lyrics like, you know, get that Taylor Swift album out and make up the words about your dog. And um, that takes a lot of creativity and it's really fun and you laugh even if you live alone with your dog. But if you live with other people, they're going to think you're really nuts. <laughs> but making up a song about your dog is a really fun thing to do. Um, as people might not know, in The Wizard of Oz, little Coco, my friend, is a Cairn Terrier. She's a huge Wizard of Oz fan because Toto in The Wizard of Oz is a Cairn Terrier. So her mom sings her Somewhere Over the Rainbow um, and changes the words to be about her dog because she loves Cairn Terriers. So find things like that that you can do to express your creativity today. Um, and it might just be singing along with your favorite song. But, you know, allow yourself to 
express yourself in some way um, because it's so important to our vitality and um, our self-worth to be able to um, express who we are. It's one of the fundamental things that the United States um, and Canada and you know other developed countries allow for people to happen. When I was in some of the Scandinavian countries, Holland and Denmark and places like that, I was amazed at how creatively people dress and the bright colors they wear to try to bring some light in a place where it's dark a lot in the winter and some creativity and some individuality in those small countries, um, especially where a lot of people um, are similar looking. So um, what you wear can really uh, have a big impact on those around you. And any of us who have, like me, had to work in an environment where you have to wear some kind of a uniform. Um, like at the co-op, <laughs> for a while they were wearing some kind of apron-y thing. Um, and yeah, they were fine. They were nice. But boy, what really made my day was going in there. Everybody had decorated their apron differently. They had buttons and stickers and embroidery and all kinds of things on their aprons, including one of my pals who had a corgi and she didn't even have a corgi, but on her apron. So that was really fun. Um, so even if you have to wear a uniform at work, sometimes you can find some self-expression with, within the confines of that. But boy, I have fought in my high school and at the prep school where I worked for a more relaxed dress code several times because I think it's a fundamental part of yourself to be able to express yourself by what you have on. And the same for your dogs. Do you like a purple bow biscuit? You're not really minding it, but I know as soon as you get down, you're going to roll, roll, roll. So thanks for joining us today. Everybody enjoy Live Creative Day. I can hardly say that without wanting to get the red pencil out. It should be creatively. Okay, everybody have a great day. Um, I'm glad we all got through Friday the 13th, which I have traditionally had as a lucky day. I don't know if anything particularly lucky happened yesterday. I got a big discount on some paint I need to fix my front deck. <laughs> that was lucky. <laughs> Everybody have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Go to Claire's and buy your dog some presents and maybe yourself. Bye-bye.